Today's topic is energy, its forms, and how it changes. As always, fill in the answers as we go. Remember yesterday I told you that this section covers a lot of material, and the study guide only covers a little bit of that material. So what I've done throughout the PowerPoint, I color-coded the answers on your paper, but I also put some words in other colors as things that you might want to write down as some extra notes to help you study. So pay attention to these things. It's a lot less boring if you're writing. Here we go. Um, let's see. Jesse, will you read first, please? Remember. So we're talking about energy today, however, we have to remember that energy relates directly to work. The amount of work done changes the amount of energy the object has. All right, Jesse, call in someone new. I said on your paper you don't have to have the guess method, but in case you've forgotten the formula, there you go. So if you substituted, what would you substitute, Alex? Um, and the final answer is? Um, 40, 40 joules. 40 joules. The amount of work that Manuel did was 40 joules. Okay, Alex, call on someone new. Jayden. And Jaden, you get to read two slides because these are short. Okay, calling someone new. You get two slides. So if you are doing work, what are you using? Everybody? Energy. Good. The red things are the additional notes that you might want to be writing down. And you don't have to write full sentences or anything. Just jot things down. The answers on your paper... Did you notice what color they would be? Alex, you read an answer from the paper off the screen. Do you remember what color it was? Yellow. Yellow. Okay, let's continue, Shannon, calling someone new. So to name something you have done today that is considered work. Go ahead, Janae. Open your book. When you opened your book, did you give it energy? Did you use energy? Yes. 
Yes. Did you give the book energy? Yes. What kind of energy did you give the book? All right, I'll come back to you. You think about it. Um, Brianna. Kinetic energy. energy. Name something, Brianna, that you've done today that's work. Wrote on your paper with your pencil. By doing that, did you use energy? Yes. And did you give some of your energy to your pencil? Yes. And what kind of energy did you give it? Good, same thing. Give me one more example, Alex. That's kind of the same as opening your book. Think of something you've done that's maybe not in school. Shot a basketball. Shot a basketball. By shooting a basketball, did you use energy? Yes. Yes. Did you give the ball energy? Yes. What kind of energy? Kinetic. Kinetic and? Mechanical. Well, mechanical is part of kinetic, or kinetic, sorry. Potential. Potential. You gave the basketball both potential and kinetic energy because you lifted it up in the air. All right, good. Let's continue. Uh, who was reading? Janae. All right, calling someone new. Okay. On your paper, you see two boxes. How did you fill those in? No? Look at the title. There you go. Don't think too hard on some of these. Work transfers energy. Just like we mentioned in our examples, when you do work, you transfer some of your energy to the object. Yep. The other part of that is the example. If you didn't come up with one of your own, or if you didn't listen to what we were saying a minute ago, here's a sentence starter. You do work to lift blank, which gives it blank energy. If you need to fill that out, in, I'll give you a moment. Focusing on mechanical energy, but that's not the only type of energy out there. Calling someone new. Okay, Snay, your turn. Before we move on, let's pause and review these two words. What does transfer mean? Natalia? To give. If you transfer money to someone, you've given them money. What does conversion relate to or refer to? Go ahead. Yes, exactly. It means to change. Another word you'll see, probably more often than conversion, it, that means to change is transform or transformation. Take transformers. What do they do? They change. They change. Okay, moving on. All right, continue. Or call on someone new. Someone who hasn't read yet, please. to hear you. Good. See, that wasn't so hard. Now you get to call on someone else. Someone who hasn't read yet. Lily, your turn. Work changes potential kinetic energy. If I each picture is shown potential or kinetic energy. Just like on your paper. 
So the first picture is showing a skier at the top of a hill. What kind of energy, Aiden, does that skier have? Good. The next picture shows a runner. Jesse, you like to run, right? What kind of energy does a runner have? Good. The next picture shows a soccer ball rolling, or in my case on the screen, someone kicking a soccer ball. What kind of energy does that have? Caitlin. Kinetic. And the last picture shows someone on a diving board. What kind of energy is that? Natalia? Potential. Now before we move on, think about this for a moment. All those pictures show a form of energy. But could, if something changed in the picture, could they show the opposite form of energy? Could the potentials become kinetic? Could the kinetics become potential? Yes, how? Okay, time out. I agree with the skier. I don't agree with the runner. How do you get how do, how could the runner gain potential energy? Just because he stops moving or isn't moving does not mean he has potential energy. Nope. If he jumps? Yes. Yes. If he jumps up in the air, let's say he's doing the high jump. Or pole vault. If he jumps up in the air, he gains potential energy. All right, let's continue. Um, who just read? Lily. Call on someone who hasn't read yet. Nucleus. All of these represent types of potential energy. We're going to focus on two types. Uh, next time, our next person is Bryce. So anything that is dependent, any energy given that is dependent on how high it is above the ground is called gravitational potential energy. Why is it called gravitational potential energy? What is the object gaining energy from? Gravity. And what would gravity do to the object if it's above the ground? It would go back down. Right. So look at the waterfall. Where does the waterfall show the most gravitational potential energy? <coughs> mm, no. Nope. At the top. The water, the higher it is, the more potential energy it has. The water up there could do work down there. Does that make sense? Do you, can you picture falling water doing work to something else, making something else move? There's a little rubber ducky at the bottom of that waterfall. Would the falling water make the rubber ducky move? Yes. Sure. All right, let's continue. Bryce Collins, someone who hasn't read yet, please. Haley already read. We've got Aiden. Jesse, have you read? Cassie? Cassie did Caitlin. Caitlin. Um, Katrina, did you read? No. Katrina? Brianna, did you read? No. All right, Caitlin, your turn. So we just learned about gravitational potential energy. This is elastic potential energy. Take a look at what's going on here and tell me what you think the word elastic means. Lily? Pulled. 
Okay, it could be pulled. What else? Stretched. Stretched. Compressed. Compressed. It actually means that if you stretch or compress certain things, they go back to their original shape. Can you picture that with the bow? By the way, that's me and my bow. Oh, lucky. I have three bows, but they were my dad's, and he's going to give them to me. Really? Yeah. So, time out. How does this show elastic potential energy? What's going on when you pull a bowstring back? Right, and it does work on what? Nope. My arm does work on the bowstring. When I let go, it does work on the arrow. Where's the elastic part actually in the bow? Is it in the string? Is the string stretchy? No, the wood. No, it's the wood. It's the frame of the bow or the limbs of the bow that actually hold that energy. And the further you stretch it, the more energy you give it. What about on the other side? Katrina? I'm asking what those are. Oh, springs. Springs. Name something that you're familiar with that has springs. Go ahead. Um, a bed. A bed. So if you jump on a bed, what are you doing to the springs inside it? You're, you're pushing them down. You're squeezing them together. And when those springs have enough force squeezing them together, what do they do? Boing. They, pop back they pop back up. And then you get a little ride, right? What else? Trampolines. Gymnastics floors. I like to relate things to what I see in my life. Gymnastics floors have springs underneath them. That's how these girls are able to do so many flips. The, the springboard that goes uh, in front of the vault. Yes. Yes. Jupiter boots. Do they have springs in them? I take it. And you can boing and boing and boing. Yeah. Okay. So, two types of potential energy you need to know. Gravitational, if you lift something up. Elastic, if you stretch or compress something that can go back to its original shape. How many of you have ever played with Silly Putty? If you stretch Silly Putty, does it snap back to its original shape? No. No. So does it have elastic potential energy? No. No. Yeah. no. It has to be able to go back to its own shape. All right, let's keep going. Uh, who's, who read last? Calling someone new. I don't think Timothy's read yet either, by the way. Go ahead. And on your paper, it asks... What do the variables Shannon? Um, gravitational potential energy. Equals? Very good. Mass times gravity times height. Yes. Uh-huh. They often do that. If you pay attention to the headings, then usually you get the answers. Janae. I put mass Okay, if you're going to put gravitational, you need to add the word acceleration. Yeah, that's what I did. Mass times gravitational acceleration times height. Okay, here's a question for you. Based on the formula you just wrote, oops, how can you increase gravitational potential energy? What could you do to make the potential energy more? Bigger number. Um, add, more mass. add more mass or look at the formula again. Increase the mass or increase the height. the height. So, Natalia, will you read? Oh, oh you're all right. Harder they fall, it's not just saying it's true. Oh, 
with more mass equals more potential energy. Good. Thank you. How many of you have heard the bigger they are, the harder they fall? Have you heard that saying? Yeah, it's actually true in physics world. All right, let's do the same thing with kinetic energy. More mass, more energy. I know, that's what I'm telling you. More mass, more energy. That's what it said. Tim, you're up. The energy of motion is called kinetic energy. K dot E equals mass times velocity to the second power divided by 2. What has a greater effect on kinetic energy, mass or velocity? Why? So look at that formula. What variable or factor has a greater effect on kinetic energy? Velocity because, because it, it, it's, 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 it's <laughs> velocity because the number, because it has the number two after What does that mean though? Squared. It means it's squared. Velocity is a squared factor. That means it counts twice compared to the mass when you determine kinetic energy. Okay, so if you know that, how do you increase an object's kinetic energy? What do you change? And how do you change it? You increase the velocity. You can increase velocity or you can increase mass. Um, Aiden, you get to read. Does that make sense? So if you are a swimmer, you could increase your kinetic energy by gaining some muscle mass. If you wait a little bit more, you could increase your kinetic energy. However, you increase your kinetic energy more by focusing on improving your time, by focusing on improving your speed. If you go faster, if you have a faster speed, that makes more of a difference on your kinetic energy. Same goes for a baseball player. A baseball player swinging the bat wants to have as much kinetic energy in the bat as possible. He or she could gain muscle, more mass, to increase the kinetic energy of the bat. However, if they can swing the bat faster, that has a greater effect than gaining muscle. All right, your turn, Alex. Okay, How do you How could an object have both kinetic and potential energy at the same time? Jesse. Okay, when it's in the middle of the hill, it is moving, right? But it's still not at the bottom, so it has both kinetic and potential. Let's look at another example. Objects can have both kinetic and potential energy at the same time because energy can be changed from one form to another. What was the word for that? What was the word that meant to change? It was a trans word. Conversion. Conversion works or transform, like transformers. Changes in the form of energy are called energy transformation. So transform, transformation. Let's consider a roller coaster. 
Roller coasters work because the energy gets built into the system. Right? Take a look at this uh, animation. Watch both the car and the graphs on the side. It also gives you the information of height and speed at different points along the track. I'll watch it again. So now tell your partner, the person you're sitting right next to, and you three can go together. Tell them how you see both kinetic and potential energy. Just give your observations about energy transformation in this uh, animation. Sorry, lights. <laughs> So, what do you notice about the energy transformation in the roller coaster car? Go ahead. Whenever it started, it had zero kinetic energy because it was tall, like high, and it was potential energy was all the way at the top. And when it went downhill, it gained kinetic energy and it um, lost potential energy. And when it went through the loop, it gained potential and lost kinetic energy. Was there any place where it's basically the same amount of kinetic and potential? When it's like in the middle of going through the loop. Okay, the first loop, second loop? First loop. Okay, first loop, it has approximately, like you mean upside down? Yeah. It has approximately the same amount, let's see if he's right. Yeah, that's pretty close. Where else? When it's going down the hill. Which one? First, first hill? The big hill. What point? Like middle. towards the middle. The middle of the first hill, Alexia shows, kinetic and potential are equal. Okay. What else do you notice about kinetic and potential energy? When it When does it change? Sorry, let me rephrase. What, at what point does the... A uh, coaster car have the most potential. Where does it gain potential energy? When it's going up. At the tops of all the hills. Where is it the very most? Haley? Which hill? Yeah, the top of the first hill in a roller coaster is always the most potential energy. Every other hill has to be shorter on a roller coaster like this because it needs the energy from the first hill to get through the rest of the ride. If you made the second hill taller, would the car get up to the top of the second hill? Not unless it was being pulled up or pushed up. How about the most kinetic energy? Where does it have a maximum amount of that? No, it's not. Well, okay. Kind of when it's flat, but really it's right at the bottom of this first hill. That's where it's going to have the most kinetic energy. Back in your binder. We'll pick up with the rest of it tomorrow. We have a few more slides to do. Just as a quick review, what were your observations from yesterday on this slide? As the roller coaster goes through its track, what do you notice about the energy?
Remember that energy is um, kind of graphed for you over on the right-hand side. Kinetic energy, potential energy. Did anybody figure out what TME, it doesn't say time, TME stands for? What does TME stand for? Olivia? Good job. Total mechanical energy. Does the total mechanical energy change? Andrew? Does the total mechanical energy change? No. It stays at 100% the whole time. Does the kinetic and potential energy change, Christian? Yes. Where do you see the most kinetic energy? What is the roller coaster doing when it has the most kinetic energy? Say it again. When it goes into the first loop, like down here. Yeah, it has the most kinetic energy at the bottom of the first tail. Josh? Okay. I'm not the study guide fairy, and I can't find it for you. I saw you put it away yesterday, by the way. Uh, where does the roller coaster car have the most potential energy? Chelsea, where does the car have the most potential energy? No, not the most. Where is the blue line the biggest? Liz? On the top of the hill. At the top of the very first hill is where the roller coaster will have the most potential energy. Why is that? What does potential energy turn into, Sarah? Okay, it, it happens to not be moving, but that's not why it has potential energy. The top of the hill, there's that little pause. Why does it have potential energy there? It's no? It's not moving like it's beginning to. No? That's not why it has potential energy. Where is it? Corey? At the top. When this uh, roller coaster first starts and it's in like the little building that you line up at, you know what I'm talking about? Does it have potential energy there? No. It's not moving, but that doesn't mean it doesn't that doesn't mean it has potential energy. It has to get up to the top of the hill to gain potential energy. So potential energy comes from where the object is located. Or if it's something stretchy, how much it's been stretched or compressed. Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. So it has the most at the top of the first hill because that's where it's the highest, not because that's where it's not moving. All right, let's continue. Skylar, this might be difficult to read, but will you read that, please? So those two energies kind of trade off. In the middle of the hill, those two energies will be equal. And as one goes up, the other one goes down. Now let's apply that same information to a new example of a person shooting a basketball. What shape does the path of the ball make when you shoot a basketball? Right, what's that shape, Anthony? What kind of shape is that? What? Okay, an upside down U. Half circle. A rainbow. A bell curve, kind of, that has ends with a normal throwing the basketball. How about an arc? You play basketball, don't they say that the arc has to be correct? If you shoot the basketball in a straight line, is it going to go in the hoop? No. If, it, if you shoot it in the correct arc, you're much more likely to get it to go in the hoop. So as a basketball player throws the ball into the air, energy conversions take place. Think about shooting a basketball, Think about what the ball does. Tell me how the energy changes. 
total mechanical energy stays the same, but how does the potential energy of the ball change? How does the kinetic energy of the ball change? Liz? When the guy's about ready to shoot it, that's potential energy, and when you let it go, it's kinetic energy. Like when it's up in the air, like spinning. Okay. When he has it in his hands, it has a little bit of potential energy, but that's not where it has the most potential energy. Where does it have the most? When it goes in the hoop. Nope. Nope. It's right here. Yeah, at the top of its arc, at the top of the curve is where it has the most potential energy because that's where it's the highest, right? Mm -hmm. You don't shoot the ball and keep it at the level of your head. You shoot the ball above you, right, and above all the players trying to block it, which is a good thing. Where does the ball have the most kinetic energy? Where is it going the fastest? Isaiah? Right, when it goes down through the hoop and hits the floor. The more time it has traveling down, the more speed it gains. Gravity, the more time gravity pulls down, then the more speed the object, in this case the basketball, gains. So look at this diagram. Does this make sense to you? The ball is going slowly as it goes up. Once it gets to the top of that arc, that curve, it reaches its highest point and the most connect, or potential energy. Then, as it starts to come down, its speed increases. So by the time it gets to the bottom, it has the most kinetic energy. All right. Any questions on that? How energy changes? That's a key factor in this unit. Does everyone understand? All right. Let's move on. Conserving and losing mechanical energy. Um, Luis, your turn to read. They want to draw this type of energy this light has at each part. Of this, this matches a question on your paper. Your paper has three different pictures. I didn't find three different pictures, so I have three different sleds on the same picture. This first sled at the top of the hill, before it starts moving, what kind of energy does it have? It has potential only. Its kinetic energy at that point is zero because it's not moving. The second picture shows the sled in the middle of the hill, like this one. What kind of energy does that sled have? Cameron. Say again. It has kinetic energy. Is that the only kind it has? So, therefore, it's both. In the middle of the hill, it's still not at the bottom, so it still has potential energy. But since it started moving, it also has kinetic energy. You would find, if you measured them, that they should be equal at that point on the hill. And the last um, sled, now at the bottom of the hill, it can't go down anymore, but it's still moving. So here it only has kinetic energy. Make sure you have checked your pictures on your paper. Any questions? OK, the next question. This is the part of the section where I said the section talks about this much and the study guide only covers this much. The next part of this section is really important, but your study guide didn't really emphasize it very much. So we're going to go over it here. We're going to go over it again later to make sure you understand. The next chunk of information is called the Law of Conservation of Energy. Unfortunately, the sun streaming in doesn't make that very readable, so I'll tell you what it says. Energy can be neither created nor destroyed. It can only change form. That's a law. Just like Newton's first law and Newton's second law, this is the law of th thermodynamics. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only change forms. So, if the energy in a system, like throwing a basketball or a roller coaster going through its ride, seems to disappear, 
then scientists look for it. They know that the total amount has to stay the same. If they see a drop in that total amount, they know that there's energy somewhere that they just didn't notice. So they look for it, which leads to many important discoveries. Um, let's see. Christian, your turn to read. Total amount. Sit up, please. Listen here before you answer. So I'm back here in my kitchen lab laboratory with a question for you. We've been talking about pendulums. We know that if we move a pendulum up, we give it potential energy. We give it this energy by doing work. Remember, work is the use of force to move an object. I've moved the washer of the pendulum over here, and therefore I gave it potential energy. I lifted it higher than it was before. When we let go, the pendulum now has kinetic energy. My question for you, though, is why doesn't the pendulum keep swinging forever? You can see, especially if you use the lines on the chair, you can see that the swing of the pendulum is getting smaller and smaller. And if we keep watching, eventually the pendulum will stop swinging altogether. The question is why? Make sure you read the section in your book titled Conserving and Losing Mechanical Energy, starting on page 126, very carefully. And you will find out this answer. The same is true. You saw the pendulum. Eventually it would stop swinging. The same is true for the Newton's Cradle. Is this going to go on forever? No. We'll let it, we'll see how long it takes for it to, to stop moving. In the meantime, find the answer to that question on page 126. The question is why does the pendulum stop moving? Why does the Newton's cradle stop moving? Read under losing mechanical energy. Good. The energy is transformed. The kinetic energy that it has when it's moving, the potential energy it has when it swings to the top of the curve is tra slowly transformed into what kind of energy again? Um, potential. No, trans potential and kinetic are transformed into energy. what kind of energy? Um, heat. Heat. Because of friction. Friction causes heat. And we know from before that any time there are two things touching, there's friction. So in the pendulum video here that you watched, there was friction between the washer and the air. There was friction between the string where it attached to the top of the chair, which you can't see, and uh, the string itself. Over here on the Newton's cradle, it stopped moving. There's friction every time one marble hits against another marble. There's friction between the string that attaches them and the bar. There's friction between the marbles and the string and the air. All of that friction takes the potential and kinetic energy of the moving object and turns it into thermal energy. Can you use thermal energy to move something? You can but it takes a lot of thermal energy to make something move. It takes a ton of heat to make something move. So when you have something like this, the heat just goes off into the air and you wouldn't even notice a change. It's not like the temperature goes up unless there's something with major friction, like an engine of a car. Okay? All right, that is a key concept. You need to know that for your test. Your test, by the way, is next Friday. We'll come back to this before your test to make sure you understand. Let's just review the five forms of energy. This is the last question on your paper. 
the question is asking you to list the five forms and how do they differ. So when you get to that question, that means I want the name of each form and a little short two, three word description of each thing. What is that type of energy found in or how do you know it's that same type of energy? Um, Josh, you get to read. If you don't have them, I'd write them now, and then you can put a little description next to each one when we get to it. Mechanical energy is what most of this section's about. How do you describe mechanical energy? Most of this section is about mechanical energy. How do you describe mechanical energy? What have we been talking about? When you make something move, and there are two forms that we've discussed about mechanical energy. When you add them, you get mechanical. Potential plus kinetic. Mechanical energy is potential plus kinetic energy, and you find it when something moves. Thermal energy. Liz, since you gave us this answer earlier, you get to read. Okay. Internal. Internal. Mm-hmm. So a phase change means from solid to liquid, liquid to gas. That's a phase change. So write down thermal energy and a short two, three word description. Cameron, tell us about chemical energy. So chemical energy is found in fuel, like gasoline, and food, and batteries. And the energy actually comes from when you break the bonds or join bonds between two atoms. Okay, our next term is electromagnetic energy. Haley, we read about electromagnetic energy. G Biv, those are the colors of the rainbow. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. It's a way to remember them. So electromagnetic energy is basically any form of light, any form of wave, sound is in there too. Infrared, sonograms. All that good stuff. Button. 
No, you can use infrared waves to detect thermal um, amounts. And our last form to describe is nuclear energy. Cameron, your turn. So this is the most massive amount of energy that we deal with. When you see at the top, in the top picture, that's a representation of an atom, and the blue and yellow particles in the middle is the nucleus. If you split those particles apart, you get a huge release of energy in the form of light and heat. When you slam two atoms together, and the nuclei of each atom kind of combines into one, you get another huge amount of energy in the form of light and heat. When you slam atoms together, that's what happens on the sun. We can't reproduce that here on Earth. If we did, can you imagine the catastrophe that we would have had? There'd be no way to contain that energy. There'd be no power plant that you could build at this point in our lives that would contain that amount of energy. Nuclear energy, however, in the form of fission, we can contain in nuclear power plants. You live very close to one. 